right, 21 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. You look for, like, when you're looking for gifts for somebody for Christmas, do you ever, like, find yourself, like, reading a book in the store that you're thinking about giving to somebody and find yourself just, you stand there forever just reading the book, right? Yes, I do. I know, I do the same thing. Yes, I do. Uh, our next book is exactly the kind of book that's going to make you just stand there and forget, oh, that's right, I'm supposed to buy this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I just standing here? How long have I been standing here? Uh, the next book is is called uh, The Christmas Spirits on Trad Street. Karen White is the author. We've had her on as a guest before, and uh, we're going to say good morning to her. Let me just make sure these buttons are pushed right before she gets some crazy echo in her head. That's what happened yeah. last time. <laughs> good morning, Karen. How are you? Nice to have you on the show. Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you. And are you in a snowy place right now? Where are you? I'm in uh, north of Atlanta, so not. It's thankfully no snow. The, the world knows what happens when it snows in Atlanta. It's <laughs> yeah, not right, good. Right. It's always funny, huh? Uh, well, thank you for yeah. be, being on the air with us. This is an interesting story. Tell us where the how this maybe maybe better question is. Tell give us a thumbnail sketch of the story, and then we'll ask other questions. Well, this is uh, the sixth book in my Trad Street series. Um, each book can can be read on its own, as can this one. Um, and it centers around Mel the main character. It's told from her point of view, Melanie uh, Middleton Trenum. And she is a realtor in Charleston, South Carolina. She inherits uh, a house in the first book. Um, and uh, although she hates old houses, uh, even though that's how she makes her bread and butter, and she lives in one, because old houses always have a spirit or two <laughs> who need her help in solving a mystery. Because Melanie can communicate with the dead. Uh -huh. And the premise of this one is that uh, a cistern has appeared in her backyard um, and, a, and, and exposed um, secrets and bricks from a mausoleum and also a few hangers on, if you know what I mean. A few oh, hangers yeah. on. Those are I the, love that. Those are the things that keep <laughs> us standing in the aisle at the bookstore. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> right? <laughs> so so uh, as you are writing uh, uh, another story in the, in the Trad, uh, am I saying it right, Trad Street? Yes. The Trad yes. Street series. Um, do you have to, especially if it's a, uh, a Christmas one, do you have to change anything? Um, not change anything, but you know, this is this is about Melanie and her family, um, and the family home on Trad Street. So, you know, um, I've I've had these characters do lots of different things in and around Charleston, and I thought, you know, why not um, immerse them in the Christmas season, um, you know, in their house, which made it really fun because Christmas at um, in Charleston is really a spectacular place to be. And uh, you've never done in in the other series you've written, you've never focused on a Christmas. Christmas book before? Uh, no, I've never done Christmas before. I might, um, you know, make a mention of it, but not, you know, a whole uh, book centered around, you know, the, those those weeks uh, leading up to, um, you know, the holidays. Do you, th you think there's something mysterious about Christmas because it's in winter? I, I often wonder if that's not it. It just gets dark so early and stays dark so late in the morning. Right. Um, you know, maybe, and you know, maybe because we've always seen, uh, you know, um, the, the, the the whole we we know about Scrooge and his spirits. Um, but you know, no, I, I really equate uh, the whole Christmas uh, season with uh, you know family and joy and cooking and decorating and, and and all of that. The dark, scary stuff for me happens, you know, after January first. Like to me, if we could just erase January second through, you know, until Easter, I'd be happy with that because that's really dreary and dark and there's nothing to look forward to. Um, whereas, you know, the Christmas season, there is. There's a lot to look forward to. And especially in, in this book, you know, Melanie has two, uh, you know, 18-month-old twins, um, and there's nothing more magical than to see Christmas through the eyes of a child. And when, when does this story take place? I think I might have missed that part. Um, it's contemporary. I, I'm very careful not to to list years because it's a series, and when I write the next book, I don't know if I want it to be, you know, right away okay. or if I want time to go on, and so I try not to, you know, so if the next book comes out in three years and, the, you know, the twins are still 18 months, you know, I don't, uh -huh, I don't okay. want people to start questioning that. So it's the spirits that are from the Colonial War era, right? That is correct. Ah, that is correct. Okay. So that, and the mystery goes back to the Marquis de Lafayette uh -huh. and a supposed treasure given to him by the French king that may or may not exist and may or may not be hidden um, in the cistern that has appeared in Melanie's backyard. And you do have humor in your book, and I love that the plumber is based on your real life. 
brother. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, and that that is said. Um, I call these these books my my palate cleanser. Um, you know, because I write other books, uh, bigger, more emotional books. I mean, there's still some you know serious stuff going on in these books, but the banter between you know Melanie and Jack and some of the other characters, and and also Melanie because she is so OCD. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that does lend itself to a lot more humor than in my other books. That is kind of fun, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very fun. <laughs> so when Melanie is, is embarking on this, she really doesn't have any choice because even though she tries to suppress it, it doesn't happen. It, it, that, that, that is correct. Um, you know, poor Melanie, and that's, you know, each book she takes, you know, three steps forward and two steps back. But, but she is she is progressing. Um, but, you know, the whole trust issue, the whole control issue, the whole, you know, learning to accept her gift that she doesn't really see as a gift, um, that's something she battles with in every book, and especially in this book. And she um, she finds in this book that it is, um, it's, it's pushing uh, Jack away, which is not the desired consequence for either Melanie or for my readers apparently because I've gotten lots of emails. <laughs> and then Jack does what Jack the character does what you do in real life. Have you sort of learned from the character Jack about writing different things even though you're making him up? No, you know, um, I poor Jack. He's had a crisis in his career. He's a, a best-selling author of true crime mysteries, and um, I have basically just mined the field of all my author friends, all of their nightmare stories of their, you know, writing careers, and including my own, and given them all to Jack. So Jack is in a pretty bad place in this book as well. Do you, uh, okay, this is the cringeworthy question, so everybody on YouTube is going to make fun of me right now. Do, do you um, have any, any kind of uh, intuitive part of you? I mean, do you sometimes tap into the other world, that kind of thing? That- nope. Uh, and thank goodness, because I'm a, a scaredy cat. <laughs> uh, my, <laughs> my son, however, um, and he, you know, will not admit this and will not share it with anyone, but he has had three experiences when I've been with him. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen things that, you know, uh, we were in an old castle in Scotland, and he was with my husband, actually. I was upstairs, and a vase flew, you know, across the room and landed in, in front of him. Whoa. Um, um, you know, he when he Whoa. was four, he saw something. Um, a, a friend of mine who who's recently deceased, and you know, wanted to know who that man was in the corner and described my friend. Um, you know, so so things wow. like that have happened around him, but not around me. And I've never seen anything on my own. Like I said, thank goodness because I am a scaredy cat, and oh my gosh, know, and I travel a lot on my own. So uh, oh so luckily, no. <laughs> um, the book is called The Christmas Spirits on Trad Street. I found it on Amazon. You're getting some really good reviews. Karen, do you have a, a website you'd like to direct us to? Yes, uh, karen-white.com. And on it, that has uh, links to all of my social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, which are all um, at Karen White, right, W-R-I-T-E. All right, very good, Karen. Thank you so much. Have a great Christmas yourself. Thank you for being on the show with us Thank today. you. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Don't look for ghosts. They might show up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. HRS 755, impeaching Donald John Trump, President of the United States.